Hi guys, today we're gonna be talking about the wonderful world of Gacha Club. Now, if you are not familiar, Gacha Club is this colorful, quirky game that seems to have captured the hearts of kids everywhere. It already has 50 million downloads on Google Play alone, and I can see why. So what exactly is Gacha Club? Well, it's a mobile game. That's a spin-off from an incredibly popular Gacha Live game. And it's all about creativity and customization, giving players the power to create unique characters with a vast array of outfits, hairstyles, accessories, and more. One of the things that make Gacha Club so appealing is its extensive customization options. Kids can spend hours tweaking every little detail of their characters to reflect their personalities or create characters inspired by their favorite anime or video game characters. But it's not just about creating characters. Gacha Club gives you the ability to create scenes and stories with the character players have created, as well as mini games and battles that give you the chance to earn gems that you can then exchange for new characters and new outfits. And let's not forget about the social aspect of the game. Although you can't actually message within Gacha Club anymore, which is for a very good reason and a very good thing, the app encourages players to share their creations with the Gacha community. Now, sure, as much as we all love seeing our kids explore their creative sides, there are definitely some aspects of the game that give us cause to pause as parents. So let's take a look at the dark side of Gacha Club. Now, while the game offers a colorful and creative outlet, there are valid worries that we just can't ignore. Gacha Club is highly addictive, that's the first thing. You will find many reviews online from kids themselves who have said how addictive they find the game. We all know how easy it is for our kids to get lost in the digital world, spending hours on end glued to their screens. With Gacha Club's captivating gameplay and endless customization options, there is no surprise that some children might struggle to tear themselves away from the game. Another concern is the Gacha system, which involves players earning virtual currency to then unlock random characters or items. While this can be exciting for players, it can also encourage a gambling-like mentality, where our kids feel the need to keep on playing and earning these, and spending in the hopes of getting that elusive character or pet that they have been chasing. And let's not forget one of the main concerns with Gacha Club is the high potential for exposure to inappropriate content. Gacha Club has an age rating of 10, which seems high for a customizable character game, and the game itself is relatively tame. The way it looks and its customization features mean that much younger kids are attracted to the game. If they have devices with no restrictions, then they will easily be able to download it. However, I have to say that I find many customizations of the characters to be a little bit creepy. You can get things like stockings and bra tops as part of the outfits, which are, in my opinion, very sexualized types of clothing to be putting on characters that look like little kids. And when it comes to user-generated elements, such as scenes and stories, you can see where I'm going with this, they can veer into mature, inappropriate territory. In fact, there are many gacha YouTubers who are sharing their creations online. It's very easy for kids to migrate from the gacha club game to watching it on YouTube. I'm sure many of the creators are not creating inappropriate content. But when I was looking into this game, as for the research for this video, this was the second video I came across on the platform. So although the game itself isn't all that awful, the community surrounding it is known to be toxic, unfortunately. In fact, many kids and teens have left reviews on websites like the Common Sense Media talking about how they came across sexually mature content as young as eight years old. So if you already have this kind of content on YouTube, a very public platform, what kind of content are people sharing on Discord or Amino, you can pretty much guarantee that the YouTube stuff is very tame compared to some of the stories that people will be sharing in private. That's always the way it is, isn't it? 
I've come across people complaining about the types of content such as violence, rape, kidnapping and incest. Not to mention that using Discord and Amino privately will leave kids vulnerable to abuse by child predators. We are the guardians of our online world for our kids. As parents, it's important for us to monitor our kids' interactions online and make sure they're not being exposed to inappropriate content. Most of the time, kids don't even know about the hidden dangers. So how can we navigate the world of Gacha Club alongside our children and address these sorts of concerns? Well, if you're happy for your kids to be playing it, then try to be proactive in monitoring what they're doing within the game. Regularly check it with them to see what they've been creating. If you allow your child to join the Discord or Amino groups, then please be aware that they are age restricted to 13 as minimum, but 16 in most EU countries and many other countries in the world. If screen time is an issue, then talk to them about it and help them understand the importance of balancing gaming with other activities such as homework, chores, and even outdoor play. And don't forget the importance of having open and honest conversations about online safety and about any concerns or issues they may encounter while playing Gacha Club. Then we have our app. FamiSafe Parental Control app can absolutely help with all of this by limiting the screen time they spend on apps like Gacha Club, monitoring Discord, Amino and many other social media platforms for explicit content or even blocking Gacha Club game completely, if necessary. Look, it's easy to say that games like Gacha Club offer our children a platform for creativity, but if you know that there are issues around it, then it's best to avoid it completely. There's plenty of other creative online outlets for our kids to use. If your local cafe was a known predator hotspot, you wouldn't keep going there with your kids just because it serves good coffee, would you? You'd find an alternative or call police. My advice is to avoid it. Not just because of its toxic community, but also because of its addictive nature. 